Lagrange multiplier with three variables. This is our objective function f x y z three variables equals to ln x square plus one, ln y square plus one, ln z square plus one. We are looking for the min and max, and then subject to this constraint, x square plus y square plus z square equals to twelve. This is an equation of a sphere. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to find our function g, which is the constraint. So I'm going to match the color, and then for this, that is my function g, g of x y z equals to x square plus y square. Plus z square. We do not need to use the twelve. We will be using the twelve when we are trying to solve for x, y, and z, right? So not at this point. And then we will recall the Lagrange multiplier. So the Lagrange multiplier that is uh, let's put this in in a different color. So that will be the gradient of f equals to lambda, and then multiply the gradient of g. So what is the gradient of f? The gradient of f we are looking for this. So the gradient of f, so that is equal to partial derivative of function f with respect to x, with respect to y, and then with respect to z. Okay, let's do it. So what is that equal to? With respect to x, so the y and the z they are just equal to zero, right? So these two terms are constant. So that will be one over x square plus one, and then chain rule. The derivative of two x square plus one is equal to two x, and then a partial derivative with respect to y. So the x and the z are constant, and you only need to take care of the y, right? So that is a y square plus one. The derivative of y square is two y, and then same thing for the z square. So this will be one over z square plus one. And then the derivative of z square plus one is two z. Okay, so that is the partial derivative of f. And then what about the partial derivative of g? So that will be uh, the gradient of g. So that is a uh, partial derivative with respect to x, with respect to y, and then with respect to z. So that is equals to. So this will be a two x, and then that will be a two y, and then that will be a two z. Okay, and then we follow the um this formula. So that will be the uh the gradient of f, which is equals to two x. Huh, you know what? I would follow the colors like that. So that will be a two x divided by x square plus one comma two y over y square plus one two z over z square. Plus one and then e equal to lambda. So let's put the lambda in red, and then y. So we have a two x comma two y comma two z, and then you multiply in right. So you have the x equals to x, and then the y equals to y, and then the z equals to z. But you have to before you set them equal, you have to multiply the lambda to the two x two y and the two z. So that means we have two x. So this I will just use use one one color. So two x over x square plus one equals to two lambda x. So two lambda x, and then two y divided by y square plus one. Equals to two lambda y, and then two z divided by z square plus one equals to two lambda z. Okay, and then um, so first thing that we can do immediately is uh, what if lambda is equals to zero? So if lambda is equals to zero, then If lambda is equals to zero, so the right hand sides are all zero, and then you multiply the denominator on both sides, then you have two x equals to zero, two y equals to zero, and two z equals to zero. So that means the x, the y, and the z are all zero. But here, but if you plug this into the constraint, zero square plus zero square plus zero square, that is not equal to twelve. 
So that means lambda can never be equal to zero. Okay, lambda can never be equal to zero. There are three cases in this problem. We are looking for the value of x, y, z. The first case is x, y, and z. They are not zero. So that will be the first case. I am going to call this case one. So case one, we have what if the x is not equal to zero, the y is not equal to zero. And the z is not equal to zero. And then I'm going to I'm going to for this problem, I am going to divide two x on both sides, and then same thing for the y and z. So I'm going to put a note first. So for two x divided by x squared plus one equals to two lambda x, we will first divide both sides by two x. And then what do we get? We have 1 over x squared plus 1 equals to lambda. And then we have the same thing for y and z. And then for y and z, we have 1 divided by y squared plus 1 equals to, no, not, not, not there, equals to lambda. And then 1 divided by z squared plus 1 equals to lambda. So they are all equals to lambda. That means I can just set them all equal. So that means I have lambda equals to 1 over x squared plus 1, which is the same thing as y squared plus 1, 1 over z squared plus 1. Okay. And then uh, since they are all equal, right? So since they are all equal, so that means the x square is equals to y square is equals to z square in this case and then i will go back to my constraint my constraint is x square plus y square plus z square that is my sphere and then since x y z are all equal so i can just put them all in x x square plus x square equals to 12 and then you have 3x squared equals to 12 and then x squared is equals to 4 x squared is equals to 4 so therefore x is equals to plus or minus 2 so x is equals to plus or minus 2 so since x y z are all equal i can just bring 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 this back i'm going to circle this and then bring this back so that means y can be plus or minus 2 and z can be plus or minus 2 And then there are a few possible points. So the possible points are, so possible points. This one, I highly recommend you to do it in this form, the x coordinate, the y coordinate, and the z coordinate. There is no need to break this down to positive and negative because there are six points. So this is a plus. This can be two, negative two, negative two. Negative two, negative two, negative two. There are six possible points. Two, two value for x, two value for y, and two value for z. Oh no, no, actually, I'm sorry, not six. So that will be a two possible values for x, two possible for y, two possible for z, two times two times two, eight possible points. So there are eight possible points. If you take care of all the combination. Since the x square, y square, it's the x, y, and z are all square in the objective function. Do you see that? They are all square in the objective function. So we can just use the plus or minus. And then returning to the objective function, this is what we have. We have f of x, y, and z. They are all equals to plus or minus 2. That is ln x square. So that will be a 4 plus 1. Same thing for the y and z. So you have three copies of ln5 added together. So that will be uh, three copies of ln5. Okay, so we'll just keep this for case one, okay? For case one. And then what about case two? So for in case one, I said that none of them is equals to zero. And then case two, I want to do one of them is equals to zero. And then case three, I want to do or I want to do two of them equals to zero. How about all of them? The all of them, we already did it right here. And we know that that is not possible. Okay, so case two. So let's do um, case two is if one of the x, y, z is equals to zero. So one of the x, y, and z 
is equals to zero and then let's just let x equals to zero to begin with so when x is equals to zero uh, that means we have the y and z right so we have one divided by y square plus one equals to lambda one over z square plus one equals to lambda since they are both equals to lambda i already got x equals to zero so there is no need to take care of the x that is equals to lambda i will just set them equal so one over y square plus one equals to one over z square plus one and then we will just keep going so we will get uh, you can cross multiply c square plus one equals to y square plus one subtract one on both sides z square is equals to y square and then you go back to the constraint the constraint is x square plus y square plus z square equals to 12 so now we are you we, we use 12 and then x we already said that x is equals to zero so zero square plus uh, y and z are the same so why don't we just bring them equal so y square plus uh, y square equals to 12 so we have 2y square equals to 12 y square is equals to 6 and then y is equals to plus or minus the square root of 6 since z and y are equal then z is equals to plus or minus root 6 and then how many points do we have uh, we have we let x equals to 0 and then the y and z it can be this or we can have the y equals to zero and then the x will be a uh, plus or minus six zero plus or minus six and then it can be plus or minus six plus or minus six root six root six not just six and then zero and then to test the point so here is what what, what we do we will just plug it in to the objective function the objective function is f of let's just do one of them plus or minus six plus or minus six you know what this one the x y the all three ln's are the same once you square so zero square plus one and then ln you have the square root of uh the square of square root so that will be six plus one and then plus you square the square root six plus one so this will be equals to ln1 is 0. So that is 2 times ln7. So even though you let the, you put the 6 in here, the 0 in here, that is the same thing. So this will be the same for all three combinations. So this will be the same for all three combinations. Right here, for all three combinations, 1, 2, and 3. It doesn't matter which one you plug in there is only one uh one value you will get that is two times ln7 we will test each of this at the end and then here is the last case what if two of the variables are equal to zero so that is the last case the last case is case three is if two of the xyz's are equals to zero so two of the xyz's are equal to zero so let's just let the y and z equals to zero so y equals to z and equals to zero and then the constraint is x square plus y square plus z square equals to 12 so that is my constraint so since the y and z are zero then x square plus zero plus zero equals to 12 and then x is the square root of 12 but we have to include the plus or minus square root of 12 square root of 12 is 3 times 4 that is 2 root 3 so that means we have a, a point when x is equals to plus or minus 2 root 3 and then the y and z are all zero and then uh what if you let the x z equals to zero uh, you can do that but that is not going to make any difference so this is the x y and z you let y z equals to zero it can be the x y equals to zero and that it can be the x z equals to zero i totally forgot the two two root three okay it can be uh the two root three in in, in the middle and then zero up front and zero at the end it doesn't matter which one you put because they are all ln and the x and y the z are all square so we only have to test one of them plus or minus 2 root 3 
and then a zero and then a zero you plug it into the objective function so that is ln the square root of that you get the 12 back plus one and then the rest is just zero plus one ln one is all zero zero plus one ln one is all zero so if you test the other points that will be the matter of where you have the 12 plus one it can be in the middle, it can be at the end. But if you have that at the end, then the first two terms are equal to zero. So that means testing one will be enough. So that gives me ln 13. ln 13. All right, so what is our, our conclusion? So here is our, our conclusion. What do we have? We have ln 13. We have two ln 7. And then we have the, the previous case, three ln 5. So we are going to compare or all of them so we have uh what what is the objective function again so the objective function is i'm going to do it right here so that will be like the x y z right so that will be like the w equals to f x y z which is equals to ln x square plus one plus ln y square plus one and then plus ln z square plus one okay and then uh we have three different values for w so we are actually comparing three ln5 and then two ln7 the last one is ln13 which one is the highest so that means in this uh, in this four di di dimensional graph which one has the highest w this is approximately 4.83 this is approximately 2.56 and then this is approximately 3.89 so that is the biggest so that is the maximum and then this is the minimum so that means the function has a maximum at 3 at uh, at at 3 ln5 and then a minimum at um, 2.56 ln 13. So in a complete sentence, this is what you say, the maximum of the function, so the maximum of the function subject to the constraint, subject to the constraint is 3 ln 5. And then the minimum of the function subject to the constraint is 3 ln 13 and then that is officially the end of this problem okay so if you like the way i explain lagrange multiplier give this video a thumbs up click the like if this is something that, that you would like to see subscribe to my channel for more contents like that as always i will meet you all in the next one signing out